plays for the Chiefs. He's had his own dating show and is currently dating one of the biggest pop stars in the world. He seems to have it all together. Let's see exactly how he is able to lock down Taylor Swift and rate his overall riz and what you can learn from him right now. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I am Professor Glow Up, where we discuss glowing up in every category. In this video, I'm going to do a Riz breakdown of a celebrity. Today, we are going to break down Travis Kelsey. I got some great feedback from my last Riz breakdown. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to do that here. Now let's get started. He is a good looking dude. He clearly takes care of himself with hygiene, style, his health, even with his career. So I understand there's a large buffer from what he can and can't say, but I know we can still learn a lot from him and his subtle mannerisms he does. He likely does this with or without realizing it. A lot of people say he's incredibly charming, which makes sense, but what does that mean? Let's first discuss our criteria. The first is how much trust or respect they are creating, making whomever they are talking to become more comfortable and talk even more, as well as how invested the person talking to them gets. They're teasing. This could include teasing whoever they are talking to and or themselves to display confidence. And now banter. Can they run with a joke and come across as not taking themselves too serious? Keep in mind that he likely has a persona in front of the camera compared to behind the scenes. People will say he is different. Some will say he's the same. So we're just going to go off these interviews and these clips. And I'm not going to refer much to his dating show because it was a so-called reality show, which we all know really isn't reality and is largely curated. So we are going off podcasts and interviews with him. Let's first start with this clip. Notice how Kristen Cavallari shows how captivating and inquisitive Travis was when they were at the same event together. It's just say that everybody knows your name. And I saw it firsthand when we met, we were at the Surf Lodge in the Hamptons and I've never seen anything like this where literally every single person in there was coming up to you. They wanted to talk to you or at least just shake your hand. And I think it's really important to note that you were very gracious with everybody. You were very engaging and really took the time, which was very sweet. But my question is when, when someone has people constantly coming up to them and putting them on a pedestal, I think it can be really difficult to stay grounded in reality. So I want to know what you do and who you surround yourself with to make sure that you are staying grounded. Well, yeah, and jumping off right into the good stuff. Actually, when I met you, everybody was doing the same thing about you. So I got to thank not you for, for, you know, what I mean, <laughs> keeping your cool and, you know, being very gracious as well. But I um. I now look how smitten she gets with a, that's not true, with a large smile. That's how you know you reciprocated well when they get all smitten and they get very happy and flush and they just can't get rid of that smile. Now, if we go off the same podcast, you'll notice how he talks about his vulnerability on going on SNL and how him and his family used to always watch that together every Saturday night. How did it feel so being fun. on that stage, the same stage that all of these icons have been on? <laughs> Man, if you um if you watch my monologue, I get I get choked up just a little bit. But um, the dress rehearsal, I really almost started crying. And then the rehearsal before that, I was literally like in, couldn't even finish the monologue. It was just like, <laughs> let's just give this a try another time. And, uh, <laughs> this is this is crazy being on this stage, and uh, it was unbelievable. It was a, it was really a dream come true. Um, I mentioned it on, on air and I've been watching that show since I was a child with my mother, with my brother, my dad. And uh, it was like kind of like our thing on Saturdays, even if we were out and about or traveling for baseball, basketball, hockey, whatever it was we were doing, you know, Saturday nights, we had an opportunity to just turn on SNL. Um, we wouldn't miss it. With that story, with his family always spending Saturday night together, to watch it then him being on it is really a wow moment and he attributes it to the super bowl win but you think that's amazing to the story that's how captivating it was is when you sit there and you go wow what a great full circle on to the next clip with an interview he gets very emotional and starts crying notice the amount of detail he gives and you really feel for him and you can picture yourself in his shoes in a very difficult time you'll notice just how much he cares for his brother Jason also lobbied new coach Butch Jones to give Travis one more chance. My brother came in. <laughs> My brother came in uh, like he was Superman. I don't know what the heck he told him. <laughs> I don't know what he said. 
Now keep in mind, he is a professional athlete and athletes of his age tend to not necessarily have an emotional stigma attached to them, not the crying stigma. So him doing this can and will come off very relatable, which makes him that much more interesting given his status and his career. In the same interview, notice how he gets emotional and how he explains how much that phone call meant to him. And the amount of emotion you feel as he describes it is wild. He handed me back the phone and Coach Reed says, welcome to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs select Travis Kelsey. <laughs> That was a pretty cool moment. Just to be there with my mother and my, my father. Seeing their reactions. That's why I do everything. So that I can, I can make the people that I love smile. Being a family oriented man shows his value system. And if you are family oriented yourself, you can resonate with him with what he is saying, making you trust and respect him that much more given how vulnerable he is being in that moment. Now, let me know down below what other nuances you notice he does and what other celebrities you'd like me to do. And if you're liking this content, make sure to like and subscribe. Aside from showing a lot of emotion, he is quite goofy. You may have seen him do plenty of dances in the end zone or goofy voices and acts and being very lighthearted. So he does joke around quite a bit. So combining this love of life with that emotional side creates a very captivating package. Let's check out this clip of him interviewing a kid and asking him about a good one-liner to talk to girls with. Notice how animated he gets when the kid says it and makes the kid who is clearly nervous opens up with the body language and gets more comfortable. What's your open liner? Uh, I'm packing a of sugar. And then I go up to a girl and be like, hey, drop your name tag. <laughs> I mean, that not my best one, but uh... Taking it! It, it has I'm using yet. that in the hotel lobby in about an hour. Great. See how animated he got and says, I'm going to do that, which makes the kid smile, so he acknowledges what he says, which makes the kid feel heard. For our final clip, this is my only clip from his show, as most of the clips I found didn't appear that genuine and show me enough about him to make an accurate read. This clip is him getting a hot dog with one of the girls, and look at his face when he bites into the hot dog. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> oh. He wasn't lying when he said it was a jalapeno in there. Yeah. It's hot. It's hot. Hey, is there any water on it? <laughs> yeah. I have jalapeno coming out of my nose, I think. This is a great way to make fun of himself. He stares at the camera. He is taking a long time to chew. Clearly doesn't enjoy the hot dog, but the way he shows it is hilarious. And of course, the girl finds it hilarious as well. Your humor doesn't always have to be a misdirection or a dark kind of humor. This style is sort of self-deprecation, but it has a little bit of a twist with it. Overall, I rate his trust or comfort a 7.4 out of 10 due to the reason that I noticed in a lot of his interviews, he made the host feel comfortable by showing vulnerability, but didn't really reciprocate much to get the host to talk even more. I know he's being the one interviewed, but you'll notice the ones who have great trust and comfort can get the host to talk more to then give them more information about them. A 10 out of 10 is someone who will get explicitly told how great of a conversationalist they are when they are the ones being interviewed. Also think of like a psychiatrist. Of course, his teasing is an 8.2 out of 10. He's very good at self-deprecating, being goofy, etc. A 10 out of 10 teaser would be getting the other person to want to tease them and do those light pushaways or really getting that person laughing very hard. With that clip with the kid and other interviews of him creating comfort with someone who is nervous, I'd give his banter an 8.1 out of 10. A 10 out of 10 banter would be able to talk about any topic a nervous or timid host throws at them and play off of it, thus loosening up the host enough to be very comfortable and have the host now talk more and start the banter themselves. Travis Kelsey has great riz, mixing the looks and the money and the status with a vulnerable, goofy personality. He really comes off as having a, an all around amazing personality alongside his success. If you wanna know how to make an impact with anyone on a date or a networking event, Make sure to check out that video here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.